so we will take a look at the convolution so from my last lecture <coughs> you may have remember that uh, how we have done convolution using graphs right but uh, here i will show you how to do it using the theory okay so this example uh, you can see what is x n and uh, what is x h n uh, x n is the input h n is the impulse response so first of all we have to write down what is x k and h k so it is um, written there x k and h k so uh, now our x axis is k so therefore i have written from uh, minus 2 to plus 5 the value of k right so you can see it then below that one you can see x k i have written so when k is equal to 0 uh, x value is equal to 3 when k is equal to 1 x value is equal to 1 when k is equal to 2 x value is equal to 2 okay so uh, then uh, as our first step we have to write down what is h minus k so h minus k is uh, h k is 3 2 1 uh, 3 is at 0 2 is at 1 uh, 1 is at 2 uh, therefore when i am writing h minus k it will be written like this when k is equal to minus 2 h minus k is equal to 1 when k is equal to minus 1 h minus k is equal to 2 when k is equal to 0 h minus k is equal to 3 so that's why i have written only up to k from minus 2 minus 2 right so therefore let's say if you have hk more values than this then you have to write down the values of k from that value okay so afterwards uh, we can write h1 minus k by shifting h minus k by 1 then h2 minus k shift in another place h3 minus k shift in another place h4 minus k shift in it by another h5 minus k shift in it by another now what we have in here is uh, hk h minus k h1 minus k h2 minus k up to h5 minus k right then you can see we have xk also so what the objective is it is to find y n so as you can see in this slide right so first value is y0 so how can we find y0 y0 is actually xk multiplied by h minus k so when we multiply xk by h minus k uh, only 3 of xk will be multiplied by 3 of h minus k so therefore 3 into 3 it is equal to 9 then, uh, in order to find y1 you have to multiply xk with h1 minus k so when you multiply that so you can see in here uh, 3 into 2 xk is 3 h1 minus k that is equal to 2 okay so multiply then uh, 1 multiplied by 3 okay they are for total 3 into 2 is 6 3 into 1 is 3 so therefore it is equal to 9 <coughs> now uh, so you you can understand this right so here this n value is represented by h1 minus k then n value is equal to 1 h2 
2 minus k n will be equal to 2 likewise so then when you are finding y2 what you are multiplying is h2 minus k with xk so when we multiply 3 into 1 plus 1 into 2 plus 2 into 3 so altogether it is 11 so um, here in order to find the y3 you have to multiply xk with h3 minus k so 1 into 1 is equal to 1 then 2 into 2 so altogether it is 5 then h4 minus k so when we multiply this we have only uh, xk with h4 minus k only one value 2 into 1 so therefore it will be just 2 then in this one uh, if you want we can find uh, what is y5 so in order to do that we have to consider xk and h5 minus k so you can see uh, there is no overlap in between xk and h5 minus k because xk will end at k equal to and h5 minus k is starting from k equal 3 so they have no overlap in when we multiply them together y5 is equal to 0 so likewise then we can find out what is yn yn is 9 that is the value at n equal 0 then again 9 11 5 2 0 right so here you can see the convolution of two finite length the sequences so which is xn and hn so if we take the length of xn as l1 and hn as l2 the length of uh, yn can be found as given below so capital l which is the length of yn it is equal to l1 plus l2 respectively they are the lengths of uh, hn and xn and hn so therefore uh, l is equal to l1 plus l2 minus 1 for above example therefore the length of yn is 3 plus 3 minus 1 which is equal to 5 so therefore it should be created as 3 plus 3 minus 1 so in this one i have uh, done an example for you right so xn is uh, 5 2 4 minus 1 hn is 5 2 4 minus 1 they are the same thing uh, so therefore uh, first of all we, what we have to do is uh, we have to write what is xk then uh, h minus k so you can see uh, in the left hand side i have written the first row is uh, the mm, the values of uh, h uh, sorry xk right then uh, h minus k uh, it is written uh, since there is no overlap in for the rest of values i have only written the value 5 right then by shifting it by 1 i have written h 1 minus k uh, in next row then uh, h 2 minus k and likewise i have written uh, all the uh, required uh, h uh, n minus k values so therefore from first one what we are getting is y0 then by multiplying uh, xk with h minus k then by multiplying uh, xk with uh, h 1 minus k we can find y1 so all the values of y n you can see in front of the uh, h value so y0 is 25 y1 is 20 so likewise we can find it and after you have obtained y n y n is 25 20 44 6 12 minus 8 and last one is 1 
so that 25 value is at 0 so therefore if I am representing this one as an equation so I can represent it as 25 delta n plus 20 delta n minus 1 because uh, delta n minus 1 is an impulse at uh, n equal 1 okay so 20 is the value at 1 therefore 20 delta n minus 1 then plus 44 delta n minus 2 delta n minus 2 is the impulse at <coughs> impulse at uh, 2 so therefore the value of uh, y2 is 44 so likewise I have written it as an equation okay so for this one also uh, it is finite length therefore l1 is equal to 4 l2 is equal to 4 so therefore 4 plus 4 minus 1 which is 7 is the length of yn so you can see uh, there are 1 2 4 5 6 7 terms of uh, yn so there are few properties of convolution convolution is commutative that means uh, uh, hn convolved with xn that is equal to xn convolved with hn so i'll uh, tell it again xn convolution hn that is equal to hn convolution with xn that means if we change uh, how we are writing it it will not uh, defer the or change the final answer then uh, convolution is distributive that means uh, when we have uh, here x1 n plus x2 n and uh, if you want to convolve or find the convolution of that signal with hn so you can write it as hn convolve x1 n plus x x hn convolve with x2 n and uh, convolution is associative that means x1 n convolve with x2 n convolve with x3 n that is equal to x1 n convolve with x2 n convolve into x3 convolve so that means uh, uh, what you can do is uh, if you want to find x1 n convolution with x2 n uh, so first you can find that answer then that answer you can convolve with x3 n and that is equal to uh, x1 n convolve with the answer of x h x2 n convolve with x3 n so i have i have uh, done what is a uh, partial linear time invariant systems right so you can recall that one uh, so our um, original equation for the convolution is yn is equal to uh, sigma when k is equal from minus infinity to plus infinity x n minus k multiplied by h k but for causal ati system so remember that this can this uh, yn equation uh, can be reduced uh, like this uh, so please refer the final answer which is uh, when um, when we are considering causal lti systems so uh, we are not considering the systems uh, which is depending on uh, future values right so therefore uh, the value of k is starting from zero and uh, it will go it can go up to infinity so therefore uh, yn uh, please refer the highlighted answer yn is equal to uh, sigma uh, k is from zero to infinity x n minus k multiplied by h k so we have finished the linear convolution so next we move on to discrete uh, Fourier transform actually in here uh, you have done how you can do uh, Fourier transform in continuous domain but uh, here it is somewhat different uh, so always remember even though I have written this as discrete Fourier transform there are 
two things basically one is discrete time fourier transform the other one is discrete fourier transform these are two different things so discrete time fourier transform we can refer it as dtft discrete fourier transform we can refer it as dft so i have told you that these are two different things uh, that's because uh, actually we cannot separate them uh, by each other because in order to derive the the dft we need dtft which is discrete time fourier transform therefore i will do it or i will show you how this is done um, as a, a holistic uh, approach discrete uh, time fourier transform dtft is the representation of sequence in terms of uh, complex exponential sequence complex exponential equals means uh, e to the power minus j omega n where omega is a real frequency variable right so actually this dtft it is uh, essentially same for the continuous time and this and the discrete time system but uh, but here there are few different things right because uh, i have told you in order to deal with discrete time you have to forget about continuous time so therefore uh, what you have to understand is uh, that uh, uh, in here in discrete time uh, linear time invariate system is always a periodic function right so so it will have uh, the frequency variable omega right and the period 25 this is the definition of discrete time fourier transform dtft right uh, so x e to the power j omega that is equal to sigma n equal minus infinity to plus infinity x n multiplied by e to the power minus j n omega right so here uh, to understand uh, x in x e j omega uh, it is written in uh, capital letter x is written in capital letter so that's because so this is like a transformation from one domain to another so e j omega that will represent the frequency domain right so uh, x n will represent the discrete or the discrete time domain right but uh, there is one thing that uh, satisfy so in order to be a dtft of x into x is right x e j omega right uh, it should converge x in should converge converge means so when we are substituting for x in from n equal minus infinity to plus infinity Uh, that is a series so that series should be less than infinity in order to find x e j omega so we will see how to do these three examples right but uh, first of all we have to remember one property or one equation for series so when Uh, so that is highlighted below sigma n equal 0 to infinity e to the power n this is equal 1 over 1 minus c right but the most important thing is the magnitude of a should be less than 1 okay so if the magnitude of a is less than 1 we can write sigma n equal 0 to infinity a n as 1 over 1 minus a so we'll go to the first example so in here uh, x n is equal to delta n so therefore according to a uh, definition x e j omega that is equal to uh, sigma n equal minus infinity to plus infinity x n multiplied by e to the power minus j n omega 
right but uh, as you all know for delta n function it exists only at n equals 0 therefore we don't have to substitute all those n values from minus infinity to plus infinity therefore we will substitute only n equals 0 so in, when we are substituting n equals 0 delta 0 multiplied by e to the power minus j uh, 0 multiplied by omega so n is equal to 0 therefore when we multiply these two what we are getting is 1 multiplied by 1 which is equal to 1 so therefore dtft of delta n is equal to 1 and the next one uh, here uh, xn that is equal to 0 0.5 to the power n un so when we are writing our uh, <coughs> definition it should be written from n equal minus m to plus infinity but the thing in here is since 0 0.5 to the power n is multiplied by un and un only exists from n equal 0 right therefore 0 0.5 n into un will exist only from n equal 0 right that means uh, uh, so it is like this uh, un you will draw un function then you can draw 0 0.5 to the power n function then when we multiply these two together there will be values only from n equal 0 because all the other values will be uh, cancelled when we are multiplying by 0 because un only exists from n equal 0 therefore the summation we can write from n equal 0 to infinity 0 0.5 to the power n e to the power minus j n omega so therefore um, for this one we can write n in next step n equal 0 uh, up to infinity then 0 0.5 e to the power minus j omega and the power of n of the whole thing but remember um, if we are going to apply that uh, previously learned equation for series right uh, the value of a should be less than one here if we check uh, or magnitude of a should be less than one if we check 0.5 magnitude that is less than one that when we are multiplying by the minus t omega uh, again that Thing will be less than 1 because e to the power minus g omega will have a magnitude of 1, one um, because e to the power minus g omega is uh, if we are writing it as a complex number right the magnitude will be 1 therefore 0 0.5 into e to the power minus g omega that magnitude is uh, less than 1 so therefore we can write using the previous uh, equation so this will be equal to 1 over 1 minus a a is equal to 0 0.5 e to the power minus j omega but we will see the next example right? so x in this is equal to minus 2 to the power n u minus n minus 1 right first of all uh, what we have to do is we have to try to find uh, find what is x n in graphically right? so graphically means uh, you can draw what is x n right uh, before that one uh, you have to remember in here this is not minus 2 to the power n uh, it is uh, minus is separate so it has 2 to the power n 2 to the power n is multiplied by minus 1 so they are minus 2 to the power n so minus sign is not part of 2 right so they are for n is only for 2 right not for minus 2 right then we have uh, um, that function multiplied by u minus n minus 1 so what is u minus n minus 1 function so if we consider uh, let's say un what is un un is a function from n equal 0 to n equal infinity and it has a height of 1 so that is unit step right un is the unit step and it means it has magnitude of 1 
right? The method means uh, height of one for each n value, right? Then in order to find the u minus n, right? U minus n uh, uh, we can find by flipping u n through y axis. So if I flip u n through y axis, what I am getting is u minus n. So u minus n is drawn from n equal minus infinity to n equal 0. Right? So after you flip in that, then if you want to draw u minus n minus 1, right? What you have to do is now you have u minus n. You have to shift that function to your left by one. So therefore, uh, then you can find u minus n minus one, right? So you can just uh, draw it. Uh, I'll give you uh, like one or two minutes, right? So can you try to draw what is u minus n minus one? you have drawn u minus n minus 1 it will only exist from minus infinity to minus 1 so if you multiply it uh, any function with u minus n minus 1 that function will be the resultant function that will also exist from minus infinity to minus 1 right because when you multiply, right, if there are no values, that means if the values are 0, when we are multiplying, uh, even though the other function has some values, it will cancel out in that one. Therefore, right, when you have u minus n minus 1, right, u minus n minus 1, you can you can uh, you can you can see the figure that you have drawn right it since it will exist from only n equal minus infinity to n equal minus one okay uh, if you are multiplying by any value right? it doesn't matter what is the value what is the value that you are multiplying what is the function that you are multiplying that resultant function will only exist from minus infinity to minus 1, right? So, with that thing in our mind, we will proceed. So, therefore, for DTFT, XEJ omega, when we apply the given uh, equation, uh, we can write Xn e to the power minus J omega N. So, xn in here is minus into 2 to the power n u minus n minus 1, that is xn, then e j e minus j omega n. Okay. So, then uh, now I have told you that, so you know that uh, minus 2 to the power n u minus n minus 1 e minus j omega n, right. So, in here we have u minus n minus 1. So, all these things are multiplied. So, therefore, uh, what you have to understand is minus 2 to the power n into e minus j omega minus into 2 to the power n e minus j omega n that will only exist from 
minus infinity to minus 1 okay because u minus n minus 1 will only exist from minus infinity to minus 1 okay therefore I can change my limits from n equal minus infinity to n equal minus 1 like this and uh, I can remove that unit step uh, shifted function like this so n is from minus infinity to minus 1 and it is so u minus n minus 1 it is removed because uh, that is represented by our limits okay now uh, my objective is to make this thing right make uh, this summation into a form that where where I can apply where I can apply my uh, equation uh, I have shown you previously what is that equation uh, so you can refer the previous slide okay so when we have n equal from 0 to infinity a to the power n it can be written as 1 over 1 minus a if a if magnitude of a is less than 1 okay so what i am doing next is uh, i will change my limits right so like this so here uh, we have minus into 2 to the power n e to the power minus j omega n right so if i want to change my limits of n to plus infinity to 1 or n equal 1 to plus infinity both are the same thing right so i'll repeat n equal infinity to 1 or n equal 1 to infinity is the same thing if i want to change that what i will do is by changing the value of n at the summation right what i will do is i will change the polarity or the value of n in the function right that means i can write i can replace n by minus n okay so if i replace n by minus n the same thing will happen so as an example let's say you are asked to find you are asked to find sigma n equal uh, minus infinity to minus 1 for a value of n then without uh, in order to change the limits what you can change is you can change it for n equal infinity to n equal plus 1 and with that one you can replace your value of n by minus n right so same thing will happen because uh, if what we need is just the limits so if that limit is if that limits are satisfied so that is about it so therefore in here i will replace n by minus n therefore my limits will also change from n equal 1 to infinity but my function will change uh, minus value 2 to the power minus n e to the power j omega n right so you can see that this has done the same thing right no change then next one uh, in order to apply that series equation uh, my equation should be from n equal 0 so therefore what I will do is I will substitute n equal 0 to uh, this equation so if I substitute n equal 0 to this that means for this one if I substitute n equals 0 what I will 
then get in is minus 1 right so when I get that minus 1 what I will do is I will add that minus 1 to this equation right separately but if I add that minus 1 that will change my equation therefore in order to uh, in order to uh, neutralize that thing I will add plus 1 right so I will add minus 1 which is the value of this thing when we substitute n equals 0 right then I will in order to neutralize that I will add plus 1 so like this okay so after I have added the value at n equals 0 all together I can write that thing as n equals 0 to infinity minus 2 minus 2 to the power n e to the power g omega n plus 1 okay so this can be written because I have added the value at n equals 0 then I have uh, in order to reverse that which is which is minus 1 in order to reverse that one I have added plus 1 okay so then I can apply my um, equation for the series so before that one I will take minus sign outside the uh, summation mark right that minus sign will not affect to plus 1 because plus 1 is placed separately right? so therefore I will take n also out as you can see here to the power 1 e j omega and everything to the power n so for n equals 0 sigma infinity 2 to the power minus 1 e j omega n I can apply uh, that equation because uh, 2 to the power minus 1 e to the power j omega that is uh, the magnitude of that is less than uh, 1 because 2 to the power minus 1 is 0.5 e j omega magnitude is 1 so therefore when we multiply the magnitude will be just 0 0.5 which is less than 1 right so therefore that thing I can replace like this so that minus sign will come because it is outside the negative outside the summation so therefore minus 1 right divide by 1 minus 2 to the power minus 1 e j omega right so 2 to the power minus 1 e j omega right then separately I have plus 1 right so then uh, this is not the end right so what you can do is next you can um, simplify this thing so in order to simplify you have to take the common denominator when you take the common denominator that will be 1 minus 2 to the power so e j omega right and um, you have to multiply 1 with that common denominator plus 1 so therefore minus 1 to plus 1 will cancel out right then uh, then what you will what there will be is that uh, 2 to the power minus 1 and that thing right but finally right if you simplify it right you can get this answer 1 over 1 minus 2 to the power minus j omega right 1 over 1 minus 2 to 2 into e to the power minus j omega right so in order to do that you have to proceed with few steps right so i will leave it to you okay so then we'll see how this dtft provides frequency domain representation right so consider xn is e to the power j omega n that is our input and here we have our LTI system which has an impulse response of Hn right so therefore as you all know yn is equal to uh, xn uh, xn convolution with Hn or Hn convolution with xn therefore yn we can write as sigma k equal minus infinity to 
plus infinity h k x n minus k right so then um, after we have written by n so like this here you can see um, uh, sigma k equal minus infinity or plus infinity h k x n minus k which is equal to uh, k equal minus infinity to plus infinity h k e j omega n minus k because now uh, our x n is e j omega n therefore in order to find x n minus k we have to replace n by n minus k therefore it will be e to the power j omega n minus k so in the next step uh, we can write uh, e to the power j omega n minus k as e to the power minus j omega k into e to the power j omega n right then uh, you can see we have our uh, limits from k equal minus infinity to plus infinity that means in the, for the values of n it will not defect so therefore i can take e to the power j omega n outside of the summation because the summation is only for k values or, or functions which contains k values e to the power j omega n that will not contain k values therefore i can take it outside of the summation so now what i am getting is y n e to the power j omega n uh, y n as e, e to the power j omega n sigma k equal minus infinity plus infinity h k e to the power minus j omega k so if we recall our uh, equation for dt f t right so x a j omega that is equal to sigma k equal minus infinity to plus infinity x k e to the power minus j omega uh, j omega k o o n right so therefore the same thing that we have in here so therefore uh, same thing means um, it is like uh, sigma k equal minus infinity to plus infinity h k e to the power minus j omega k that is same as uh, the dt f t of h k or else we can say it as h n and for that one we will refer as h e j omega or the frequency response of the uh, h n function right so uh, so you can recall our previous uh, uh, definition of uh, d t f t x e j omega that is equal to sigma sigma uh, n equal minus infinity to plus infinity uh, right uh, x n e to the power minus j omega n right so same as with k right so if we can write as x e j omega that is equal to sigma k equal minus infinity to plus infinity x k e to the power minus j omega k right so that is the uh, d t f t of x n or x k so therefore d t f t of h k will be written as or h n can be written as sigma uh, k o n equal minus m to plus m to h n o h k e to the power minus j omega k so that thing we can refer as capital h e to the power j omega or the frequency response of the uh, impulse response o h n right so frequency response we are writing as h e j omega is equal to sigma k equal minus infinity to plus infinity h k e to the power minus j omega k so the same thing uh, this k can be replaced by n also right therefore therefore we can refer h e j omega sigma k equal minus infinity to infinity h k e to the power minus j omega k right so as i have told you previously this k can be replaced by n also right so uh, if we want to obtain our impulse response right what we have to do is we have to take the inverse discrete time fourier transform so if we take inverse discrete time fourier transform it hn can be written like this we haven't discussed it yet but you will understand after 
that okay so therefore for LTI system that we have here which has an impulse response of HN right and the frequency response of that function if we can take it as H E G omega right so HN and H E G omega right so they are DTFT pairs that means H E G omega is the frequency response of HN right so uh, if we have uh, input signal of XN right XN and the frequency response of that function as X E J omega right what we are getting is a Y N or the output signal and uh, the frequency response of that thing is Y E J omega right? uh, we can write it like this right so uh, look at the bottom of the slide y e j omega that is equal to h e j omega x e j omega so what you have to notice in here is if we have in our time domain what is y n is y n is equal to h n conjugate with x n right but when we have in the frequency domain y E j omega that is equal to h e j, j omega multiplied by x e j omega right so it is a multiplication so when we are in the uh, frequency domain convolution has converted to uh, multiplication right so i will repeat that thing uh, when we are in the time domain or the discrete time domain y n is equal to h n convolution with x n right but when we are at the frequency domain uh, y e j omega which is the frequency response of y n that is equal to frequency response of h n which is h e j omega multiplied by frequency response of x n which is x e j omega right so uh, convolution will be converted to multiplication in frequency domain or when we get the discrete time Fourier transform it will be converted to uh, or convolution will converted to a multiplication right so uh, here we can see x e j omega or the discrete time Fourier transform of x n is written and uh, y e j omega discrete time Fourier transform of y n is also written then HN which is discrete time Fourier discrete time Fourier transform of um, H H E J omega which is the discrete time Fourier transform of HN it is also given in here right so you can see all the equations for for X Y and H they are the same thing right because for discrete time Fourier transform is the same equation for any function right so therefore uh, xn yn hn those things are also written but that is only uh, from the inverse discrete time Fourier transform right so for any function the inverse discrete time Fourier transform is uh, you can write as xn right is equal to 1 over 2 phi from minus phi to plus 5 uh, x e j omega multiplied by e to the power j omega n d omega right so because uh, from time domain we can go to discrete time Fourier uh, transform right so when we are taking the inverse we are coming from d t f t or discrete time Fourier transform to the time domain okay so these things we can call as x e j omega and x n are d d f t pairs y e j omega and y n they are d d f t pairs x e j omega and x n they are d d f t pairs right so here you can see few properties of d d f t right so first one is linearity when we have a x n plus b y n d t f t will be a x e j omega plus b y e j omega right 
so here another thing uh, x without uh, always uh, write in x e j omega or y e j omega or h e j omega we can represent them as x omega or y omega they will be the same thing x e j omega or y e j omega um, that can be represented x omega and y omega will be the same things right so i will refer them like this now so x in in minus n naught so if you shift your uh, function in time domain what will happen in fourier uh, dtft is it will be multiplied by e to the power minus j n naught omega n naught that is the value that you have shifted your time domain signal right so it will be multiplied by x e j omega o x omega right so if we take time reversal that means if you are going to find x minus n it will be x e minus j omega e x e j minus omega means right so you have to replace all all uh, omega values right omega values uh, by minus omega of x e j omega right so x e j omega is the fourier the dtft of x n right so if you ask to find uh, x minus n dtft what you have to do is you have to replace uh, x e j omega uh, all the omega values by minus omega right so then modulation modulation means when you are multiplying with uh, complex value e to the power j in omega naught in time domain what it does is actually it will shift the in the frequency domain that means so you have to shift or you have to replace your dtft function or you have to replace your dtft function that means x omega which is same as x e j omega right you have to replace that thing by omega minus omega naught omega should be replaced by omega minus omega naught which which indicate a shift right so in the next property xn convolution with yn that will be in the dtft or the frequency domain it will be x e j omega multiplied by y e j omega multiplication right then uh, conjugation of x n it will be a conjugation of uh, dtft domain right then uh, derivative oh, that means n into x n n into x n so you can find it as as given in the equation j uh, differentiate your dtft domain value by omega then multiply it by j right so that so it is says the multiplication xn multiply by yn right so actually that will represent in the dtft domain as 1 over 2 pi from minus 5 to plus 5 x e j omega y e j omega minus omega naught uh, omega minus theta d theta right so there is another theorem called parsevals theorem right conversion of energy theorem right so try to prove that one right uh, before your next lecture okay so i have shown you few examples right so uh, dtft of delta n is equal to 1 dtft of delta n minus n naught is e to the power minus j n naught omega right so this can be obtained by applying the shifting property that you have seen in the previous slide right so time domain shift will be result uh, frequency domain as a multiplication by e to the power minus j n naught omega right so when you have a shift like here minus n naught it in a dtft or frequency domain it will indicate as multiplication of e to the power minus j n naught omega right so then uh, if you have one right if you have one you will get dtft as 2 phi 
delta omega right so from this one what i have to tell one thing that is uh, so let's say if you have uh, if you have uh, any function right any function right Le uh, let's say 5 6 7 so like that uh, that means uh, function is 1 2 3 4 5 so likewise right but uh, that is a continuous continuous uh, domain one right so therefore uh, it it will be like 2 phi delta omega right? so that one it is in frequency domain for like uh, uh, continuous time therefore we can skip right but that if you can understand it is better right so then if we have e to the power j n omega naught e to the power j n omega naught so it will result 2 phi into delta omega minus omega naught right and uh, then a to the power n u n when a is less than 1 i have shown you this exa this with an example if you can remember uh, then the next one also i have shown you with an example right okay so all the other things you can actually prove without any um, uh, complexity right so try to prove the other things right then so here <coughs> what it does in actually in uh, DTFT is right in DTFT uh, any signal right any signal in time domain it will put into uh, frequency range of uh, minus 5 to plus 5 frequency means omega right so omega it is referred as frequency okay so here here you can see the signal right uh, what is that signal that is uh, xn right xn is actually it is delta n right when it is delta n our x omega or x e j omega so i have told you previously x omega and x e j omega are the same thing right so uh, the answer is equal to 1 which is a continuous value right so our signal is at discrete domain but x omega is in uh, continuous it is a continuous function right but it is in the frequency domain right so you can see uh, if you take a look at in each and every thing in here every function right what it does is it will put your uh, discrete time signal discrete time signal in a uh, in a range of omega between minus 5 to plus 5 right so in the next function what you can see is when xn is equal to a right a means any uh, it is uh, it is like any any value but uh, here it is like uh, given as one right so let's say it is a right uh, then it will result the um, dtft or frequency domain as a sync function this function is called the sync function right sync function s i n c sync function then um, here in next example also you can see uh, actually in next example xn is in the form of a sync function right and that will result you x omega in uh, x omega uh, as a continuous function from minus omega c to plus omega c so you have to understand that x omega will not go beyond minus 5 and plus 5 so likewise uh, dtft is even like okay so here i have shown you few examples right few examples so uh, here if you are asked to determine x in a um, which is equal to a in u n right so you can refer the previous example that i have given this is for a common value right so uh, this is what you can see right okay here uh, another one another one right so here this in this example right in this example uh, x1 in uh, a e, it is equal to a in u n right then 
if if we have that x1 e j omega right that is 1 over 1 minus a e minus j omega right so because from the previous thing that we have proven right but here actually what we can do is we can uh, see right x2 n what is x2 n x2 n is x1 n minus 5 right So x1 n minus 5 is a n minus 5 u n minus 5, right? So if you take, if you take uh, x2 e j omega or x2 omega, which is the dtft of um, dtft of uh, x2, right? That will be uh, x1 e j omega multiplied by e to the power minus j phi omega because a shift in uh, time domain will result multiplication of e to the power minus j omega n naught here n naught is equal to phi right so what I, what i have shown you here is how to do okay how to do or how to use the properties that we have learned in atft then uh, here is another one right so here consider hn is half to the power n un and xn is um, 1 over 4 to the power n un right so then uh, x h omega you can find sigma n equals 0 to infinity half n e to the power minus j omega n right so uh, here this one again you can apply the um, sigma n equal 0 to infinity a to the power n uh, series value so here a is like 1 over 2 e to the power minus j omega so the it will result h omega o h e j omega both are same things 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 e to the power minus j omega right then x omega right that will result as 1 over 1 minus 1 over 4 e to the power minus j omega right um, here x omega and x omega and h omega right they are the the structure of hn and xn are same therefore they will result almost uh, like same structure in h omega and x omega right so therefore if you are asked to find the output or the output at the uh, frequency domain what you have to do is you have to just multiply h omega and x omega right because uh, if you are if you are going to find uh, the output in the uh, time domain you have to find the convolution of xn with hn but in frequency domain you don't have to right because um, convolution is converted to multiplication as I have shown you previously ok so then here uh, this is how we um, find the uh, inverse discrete time Fourier transform right so for this is just for like your reference uh, and uh, you can uh, you can refer this one uh, you can refer this one and try to find the answer right so uh, from the definition of inverse discrete time Fourier transform xn is equal to 1 over 2 phi from minus 5 to plus 5 x omega e to the power j omega and d omega right? so that is for anything right that is for any uh, in, in uh, inverse discrete time Fourier transform right so 1 over 2 phi right so here it says x omega only exists from minus infinity to the, um, sorry minus omega c to plus omega c right so uh, x omega that is equal to 1 for the magnitude of omega less than uh, less than or equal to omega c that means uh, from minus omega c to plus omega c x omega is equal to 1 right so here 
when we are substituting it in the equation or the integration minus omega c2 plus omega c x omega is equal to 1 e to the power g omega n d omega right so here this one you can easily uh, easily uh, integrate because uh, because uh, our only variable in here is omega right so you will you will get uh, when you integrate this one you will get it as uh, so if you integrate you will get as e to the power j omega n right divided by j n right and then if you simplify or oh, after applying the limit you will get it as sin omega c n over phi n right so actually what you are getting in here is a sinc function right so as an example if you substitute x0 what you are getting is sin omega c n over phi n right so seems like it seems like uh, it is equal to uh, 0 divided by 0 but it is not and because when sine uh, theta is very small sine theta over theta that is equal to 1 right that is that is equal to uh, 1 right so in here actually it will be omega c over uh, omega c over phi because omega c n divided by omega c n right so therefore uh, i am dividing sin omega c n over phi n by omega c so if i divide in by omega c i have to multiply by omega c in order to neutralize that then what i am getting is omega c over phi omega c divided by phi then sin omega c n divided by omega c n so omega c n we can take it as theta then sin theta divided by theta what you are getting is 1 and that will be multiplied by omega c over 5 right <coughs> so likewise you can find 